Hello, this is the Slow Food Survivalist. In the following video, I will show you how to build a very versatile basic power bank. Nothing fancy, nothing extra. Just 45 watt hours of portable power for less than 10 euros or dollars. A true ghetto bank. The heart of the project is a bunch of 18650 rechargeable cells from discarded laptop batteries. In many, if not most of the cases, when a laptop battery is dead, there is something wrong in the circuit board of the battery or in maybe one of the cells. And the rest of the cells are still in perfect working condition and still usable for a long, long time. However, lithium ion cells can be dangerous. And when mistreated, they may blow away your fingers or turn to a torch and burn your house. So please read some of the warnings available at the address below this video. And do not try to repeat any of the stupid things I do. Ok, after the necessary warnings. First, we need the cells. In this case, six of them. Trace to hold the cells. Some scrap plywood for supporting the trays. Some wire and scrap metal for connections. Some screws and hot glue to bind things together. A box to store and protect the system. And most importantly, a protective circuit board against overcharge, discharge and such. The necessary tools to complete the project are a drill, a screwdriver, soldering iron, a pair of pliers or clippers or whatever you call them, a hot glue gun and a multimeter. First thing to do is to cut a piece of plywood so that it fits into a half a liter freeze box or whatever box you are going to use. Then use a drill and small screws to attach the battery trays to the plywood. Depending on the length of the screws and the thickness of the plywood, it may become necessary to use some small pieces of plywood as additional spacers. Next, it is time to solder the necessary connections to the battery trays. In this case, the connections are such that there are three parallel sets of two cells connected serially together. This way it is possible to run power bank with either six or only three cells, just in case you have some cell failures in the middle of nowhere, or if you wish to recharge some of the cells while using the others. When the tray connections are done, it is time to connect the batteries to the protective circuit and to solder the output wires. In this picture you can see how the wires are connected. Then it's time to protect the connections from the physical abuse and possible short circuits by covering pretty much everything with hot glue. Then some foam plastic from an abandoned cushion of the garden chair and the basic power bank is ready to meet the elements. The ghetto bank presented here can take some serious beating. It's pretty much waterproof. And in addition it floats just in case you happen to fall off the boat with it. And the total weight of the whole thing, with the necessary connecting thingies, is about 450 grams. That is almost exactly one pound. Not bad for 45 watt hours. What else could you ask for? 
Oh, how to get the power out of the ghetto bank and how to recharge it. Those are good questions and they deserve some answers. The purpose of this project was to build a lightweight, dirt cheap power bank good for a variety of situations. By dirt cheap, I mean that I set the absolute budget limit for the whole project to 10 euros or dollars, including possible shipping costs of materials and the necessary consumables. To stay within the shoestring budget, I left the power outlet as primitive as possible, meaning two naked strips of metal securely separated from each other for safety reasons. To run any relatively low power 12 volt device, such as the charger of my Sony video camera battery, I just connect the ghetto bank and the device with two wires with chalk lamps and a suitable plug. Cost of this connection is about 50 cents. A whopping 89 cent investment gives me a chance to charge my tablet, phone, action camera and anything else requiring 5 volt output to USB. For charging the ghetto bank itself, you can either charge the whole pack with any abandoned 12 volt power supply or a car cigarette lighter or charge the individual cells with a regular lithium-ion battery charger and still keep using the remaining three cells in 3S1P format. Sometime in the future I may upgrade the ghetto bank with some inbuilt power sockets, voltage meter, on-off switches and such, but for now I'm quite happy with the ghetto bank as it is. A cheap, lightweight, rugged, floating and ugly source of power for quite a many of outdoor activities. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.